Chromatic aberration. As long as that's how I think you say it. Yes, it's that cool RGB effect that comes up in almost every video game. And it can transform a game's graphics from a PS2 game into a PS5 game. Well, maybe not that much. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to implement that cool post-processing effect inside of OpenGL. So, let's jump into it. But real quick, before we jump into it, let's talk about the theory, like how does it work? So, if you search up chromatic aberration, we get something that looks like this. And if, you, if we take a look here, it says, when a lens is not able to properly refract all its wavelengths of color at, in the same point. So, yeah, that's kind of scientific. I don't understand 100% of it. But if we take a look at this picture, we could see that um, all the color channels, the redness, the blueness, the greenness, is not landing on that same point, giving that distortion effect. So, let's go ahead and implement this. Alright, so for this tutorial, I'm going to be using something called Shader Toy. Shader Toy is literally a website where you can make your own shaders. The reason I'm using this rather than an OpenGL project is this one's way faster and we can get the real-time results of our shader on the left-hand side of our screen. You guys will see in just a second, but yeah, this is just way better for the tutorial, but it is in GLSL, so this will be completely convertible to a OpenGL shader. So, once you're at Shader Toy, if we click new, and by the way, you don't need to follow along, you guys can just write this code down in a regular shader in your OpenGL project, but yeah. Alright, so once we click new, we get something that looks like this. Alright, so from here, let's go ahead and clean up some of this code. So, um, let's go ahead and get rid of this because we're not going to be using that. And just to show you guys that this is literally GLSL, if, if we go up here and click on this bar looking thing, we get like a list of uniforms. So, hopefully you guys know what a uniform is. And by the way, I'm assuming you guys know GLSL. And I'm assuming you guys have a post-processing pipeline set up in your OpenGL project. So, you guys have frame buffers going and all that because this is a post-processing effect if I didn't make that clear earlier. But anyway, so, yeah, so we just have a bunch of variables here, and we have access to time, delta time, so that's the time between each frame. We also here have the mouse coordinates, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, if we go ahead and close that up. Um, okay, so from here, just to show you guys how to compile something with Shader Toy, let's go ahead and have UV get pasted right there, and since this is a vector 4, we'll just put in a 0 right here. If we go ahead and run this to compile this, you gotta click this arrow looking thing. Not really arrow, but you get the point. And we get something that looks like this. Great. But we don't wanna do this post processing effect on a quad that looks like this. We want to do a quad on a scene, on a picture. So, luckily, we can do that with Shader Toy. Um, a texture or a picture would just be a sampler 2D in OpenGL. So, the way of doing that in Shader Toy is if we go down here to channel, a big window pops up and we get a bunch of cool stuff. If we go to textures, we get a bunch of textures that we can use. And the best one that I found for this tutorial is actually right here, this building looking thing. So let's go ahead and click on that and go ahead and close that up. Perfect. And to actually use this texture the same way you would do in GLSL. So we would just use a texture function. So we would just type in texture. It would type in the name of our uniform. So that would be iChannel0 that is coming from down here. And we would put in our UV coordinates. And we just want to extract the color from this, so we would just get the XYZ. And we would store this in a VEC3. And if we put in color here, and get rid of this, because that would error us. Go ahead and run that. Perfect, great, we get a texture. And just to show you guys the dynamicness of this, we can put a negative sign here, and that would actually negate the vector. So. The Y would flip and the X would flip. Let me go ahead and show you guys that. Cool. Alright, so now that we have this texture, how do we do this chromatic aberration effect? How do we distort this image? Okay, so, remember that the redness, blueness, and greenness channels are not going to land on the same pixel. So what we need to do is deal with them all separately. So, if we go ahead and copy this three times, let me go ahead and do that. We'll get the X right here. Oops, I'll put the Y over here, and the Z right there. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and store this in this corresponding variable. Alright, so as you guys can see, we're storing the RGB values inside of their own variables. So we can just actually go ahead and replace this right here with RGB. And let's go ahead and run this. Nothing should really change, but this is an improvement. So from here, 
We want to create that offset. We want to create that distortion. That ray, that single line of redness should be distorted because remember, they're not landing on that same pixel. So we need to create a shift, like some sort of offset. So to do this, the best way to do this, or maybe perhaps the only way, is to have a minus sign or a plus sign, but doesn't really matter. Um, we'll, we'll subtract it by a vec2 because you the coordinates of vec2. And we'll give it that small offset. I, I found the sweet spot to be 0 0.5, but depending on what game you're making and what you want to do, this is a parameter that you can change around. And chromatic aberration is an effect that you can do horizontally, diagonally, vertically. In our case, we're going to be doing it horizontally because we're only dealing with the shift in the x direction. So let's go ahead and do the same with the blueness. So we, we just did the red. Let's go ahead and do the same exact thing with the blueness channel. And I'm going to creep the green channel exactly where it is. But let's just make sure this is a plus sign. So the way, the way I would explain this is if we're shifting the red channel to the left by 0 0.5, it would only make sense to shift the blue channel to the right 0 0.5 or 0 0.05, I mean. Anyways, let's go ahead and compile this and let's go ahead and see what happens. Perfect, so we got this effect. This is amazing. And just to show you guys what else we can do, we can change the intensity. So making this a bigger number would intensify that. And you know what? I'm actually gonna go right here and change this to GL clamp. That's just gonna make that look a bit nicer. Let's go ahead and close that up. All right. And this can also be diagonal. So as you can imagine, if this both affects the X and the Y axis, um, that would create a diagonal effect like this. Now that's a little bit too strong. Let's go ahead and drop that down back to 0 0.5. Yeah, I'm loving this effect. So that's basically the gist of it. Now in a video game, you might not just want to have your whole entire scene like have this effect. You might want to have parts of it have this effect more than others. So what I see in a lot of video games is the center is fine, but towards the corners of the screen, you have this distortion, this chromatic distortion. So how would you implement that? Although I'm not going to show you guys how to implement that in this tutorial, a good way in my opinion would be measuring the center coordinate of your screen. So that would be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That would be in UV coordinate space. So then when you're sampling a coordinate, a UV coordinate, you would take that coordinate and get the distance from that coordinate to the center. So if I'm sam if you guys look at my mouse, if I'm sampling this pixel right here, we can compare that pixel to the center pixel and get the distance. The further away, the more chromatically distorted that could be. So the corner pixels would be really distorted. But anyways, that will be it from me here today. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best that I can to answer them. But with that said, thank you guys so much for watching and have a good one.